So let me just tell you that animal fat does not cause heart disease. It reverses heart disease and heals you from it. Cholesterol does not cause heart disease. What causes heart disease are vegetable oils, sugar, and flour. Everything made out of flour and sugar. All your cakes, biscuits, bread, pasta, bagels, baguettes, you know, sandwiches, all the things that people are eating and breakfast cereals. Breakfast cereals are an absolute poison. Nobody should be yeah. eating. So these are the things that cause our epidemics of chronic diseases. And whatever diet people decide to follow in the world, whether they want to be carnivore, eating only animal foods, whether they want to be vegan, eating only plants, or they want to eat something else. The first thing that every diet demands is that you remove sugar, flour, and vegetable oils. And because people remove these things, these three things, they start feeling better, regardless of what they're actually eating. That is why in any diet that people follow, whatever your choice is, the first improvements that you will get in the first several months will be simply because you've stopped eating bread, sugar, pasta, biscuits, cakes, vegetable oils, and all, all this sort of thing. I get my olive oil cold pressed from Greek. It's a little uh, farmer, organic one. Vegetable oils like olive oil, and th there are some other vegetable oils on the market, such as avocado oil and hemp oil and flax oil, and there are mixtures. If they're extracted okay. cold without application of heat in the dark, using traditional mechanical methods such as stone ground, you know, stones yeah. that are used for making olive oil. And if they're packaged in dark glass and refrigerated, they can be beneficial. We can use them, but we cannot cook on them. If you heat it, you destroy it. You should not cook with olive oil because good quality olive oil from Greece or Italy or other places like that, uh, its value is in the spicy taste and the green color. And these are all sorts of phenols, salicylates, antioxidants, phytonutrients, and other micronutrients that the olive oil contains which are anti-cancer, which detoxify, which cleanse your body, which remove various toxins from your body. When you heat the oil, you destroy them. It just becomes plain oleic acid, which is a monounsaturated um, fatty acid. It's fairly stable, so it's not very poisonous, not very bad, but still it's not a good practice. Cooking should be done. You use these oils as ready as a dressing on the ready served meals. You can make mayonnaise with it, homemade mayonnaise. You can put it on your salads. You can put it on your ready served meals, cold. But don't heat it. Don't cook with them. Cooking should be done on pork fat, lamb fat, beef fat, goose fat, duck fat, butter and ghee. So during our fast, there's no real option, just a... A compromise. You just eat a lot of vegetables, you make juices for yourself, yeah. and you uh, cook porridge with various grains, you cook beans, eat beans, legumes, and lots and lots of vegetables. And use uh, vegetable oil, use olive oil, good quality olive oil, as a dressing on a ready served meal. So cook all your uh, grains and beans and vegetables with water, basically, and then add the olive oil at the end. Okay. Good, good to know. Thank you. Uh, in Romania, there's a there's a trend going on, like in the rest of the world, uh, more and more vegans. And from my uh, personal experience, they are very impulsive and very vocal on on the online dimension on on social media. I mean, what advice would you give vegans, or what? What promises would you give vegans if they continue for five, ten years or so? I have a book on this subject <laughs> called Vegetarianism Explained, Making an Informed Decision. If you want to start a plant-based lifestyle, please read this book first. It's not a big book. It's got nice pictures and it's easy to understand if you've got English, of course. But hopefully this might, might get translated into Romanian. I started getting in my clinic young people with bipolar disorder, anxiety, other mental problems, physical problems, who were perfectly healthy before they became vegetarian. And they became ill because of vegetarianism and veganism. And that made me very interested in this subject. Veganism and vegetarianism was a major cause of disease in the world now. Chronic degenerative diseases, neurological in particular immune yes. diseases, hormonal diseases, all sorts of problems, major, major cause. So, and first thing that I've discovered that there is not one scientific study on this subject that can be trusted. All studies that are published, particularly China study, that the mainstream is waving and saying, this is the proof. All of, it, all of them are fraudulent, all of these studies. We cannot trust any one of them. So that made me look at the basic sciences, 
of bio biology, zoology, physiology, and clinical practice. My own clinical practice and practice of my colleagues, other medical doctors, uh, because we all agree on this subject. And based on all that knowledge, I have written this book. So I will explain to you briefly. Mother Nature gave us two groups of foods. She gave us plants, that's grains, beans, vegetables, fruit, nuts, seeds, these sort of things, right? And it gave us animal foods, meat, fish, eggs, and dairy. And both of these work very differently in the human body. The basic biological fact is that the only things in nature that can digest plants, truly digest plants, are microbes. Nobody else can digest plants, only microbes. So Mother Nature used that fact, it's a scientific fact, it used that fact in creating a digestive system of a cow, or goat, or deer, or giraffe, or another herbivorous animal. It gave them three or four stomachs, enormous stomachs, full of microbes. So the cow doesn't digest grass herself. It's that microbial community in her three enormous stomachs, which are called rumen, that digest the grass for her, and then she absorbs it. We human beings don't have a rumen. We have one little stomach, very small, and it produces hydrochloric acid. The acidity in the stomach can go pH below one when we're hungry. Very hostile environment for any microbe. That is why human stomach is almost sterile. It virtually has no microbial community in it. There are just a few microbes hanging in there, surviving. So that makes plants indigestible for the human digestive system. We cannot digest plants. They're indigestible. But hydrochloric acid, pepsin, and other elements of our human stomach are perfect for digesting meat, fish, eggs, and dairy. They get properly digested in our stomach. When you swallow your food, where does the food land? In the stomach. That's the first place where the digestion happens and starts and, and the bulk of digestion is done. Then after that, from the stomach, that food moves into several meters of intestines where food gets absorbed into your blood. And the only things that can be absorbed are the things that are properly digested. And that's again, meat, fish, eggs, and dairy. Plants do not digest in the stomach. They do not digest in the intestines. They go all through those several meters, just giving us some juices, some vitamin C, maybe vitamin K1, some antioxidants and so on. And then they land in the bowel, our big bowel at the end of the digestive system, where the majority of our microbial community lives. And that's where the plants get digested to some degree. What happens there happens in the rumen of the cow. The difference is that in the cow, her rumen is at the beginning of her digestive, before food absorbs. So food gets digested properly first in her three stomachs, and then it goes into the several meters of intestines where it absorbs. In us human beings, our equivalent of the cow's rumen is at the end of our digestive system. All the absorption already happened higher up, it's too late. So we get something out of it, we get some little things out of it, but it's not enough. When you look at the structure of the human body, about 70% by weight in your body is water. So when you remove water, what's left in the dry weight, it's 50-50 protein and fat. That's what we're made of, protein and fat. When we analyze human protein and fat in a laboratory, we find that in their biochemical composition, they're almost identical to protein and fat we get from meat, fish, eggs, and dairy. They are easy for us to digest and they provide the right building materials to build your heavy bones, your muscles, your big brain, your liver, your heart, your lungs, your whole physical structure that you live in. And the physical structure you live in renews itself all the time. Every cell in your body has a very short life. It gets tired, it gets old, it gets killed and removed, and new cells are born. So your body is giving birth to trillions of cells every single day. Building materials are required to make those cells out of something, right? Yeah, and yeah. these building materials need to be protein, fat, and water. And the only appropriate proteins and fats come from animal foods. Plants have plenty of proteins, plenty of fats, but in their biochemical composition, they are inappropriate for building our protein and our fat. It's completely different. They're indigestible, first of all. The most commonly common protein, the most researched protein is gluten from plants. And I'm sure people heard this word, gluten, because more and more people in the world are becoming gluten intolerant because gluten is indigestible for the human digestive system. It absorbs undigested and causes a lot of trouble in the human body. While the animal proteins are perfect for us uh, to sustain our human bodies. So why do we eat plants at all? 
because they don't digest very well. They don't feed us. We eat them because they provide us with a lot of cleansing. They provide us a lot of uh, molecules which have a, a powerful detoxifying cleansing ability. Antioxidants, phenols, salicylates, lactins, and various other <clears throat> molecules, vitamins. So they're useful. So they help us to stay clean on the inside, the plants. That's why we eat them. On top of that, they, they provide us with variety, with colors, with flavors, with fun, with food. So, But they do not feed you. So veganism, where people eat only plants, is not a diet. It is a form of fasting. That's what people need to understand. And our mainstream doesn't know this fact and will not be able to inform you about it. Please read my book to be informed. Veganism is a form of fasting. Fasting is an ancient way of uh, cleansing your body, detoxifying and healing from diseases. And there are many varieties of fasting. You can fast only on water, or you can drink juices, or you can just eat apples and nothing else, or you can just drink milk and have nothing else. Or you can maybe have grapes or, you know, there are very various uh, forms of fasting. And veganism is one of these forms. It's a form of fasting. That is why many vegans who go on a vegan regimen at the beginning start feeling better. Because a, um, a less toxic body feels better than a toxic one. You are detoxifying. But at a certain point, your body will finish cleansing and it will give you a signal. I finished cleansing now. Feed me. I'm hungry. The way your body will give you this signal, it'll give you a desire for roast chicken, for eggs and bacon, for a sausage, for, you know, something animal, piece of meat, something, something animal like that. Problem is many vegans in our modern world are doing it for political reasons, emotional reasons, religious reasons, simply out of ignorance and misinformation and propaganda. Uh, they don't listen to their body. They, they don't listen to the signals that the body gives them. Instead of feeding their body, they, they force the body to continue fasting, cleansing. And at that point, the body has no choice but to start breaking down muscle and bone to feed the brain, the heart, the liver, the lungs, and other vital organs so you can survive. So you start losing muscle mass, you start losing bone mass, and you start losing brain mass. Yeah. Long-term vegans, literally, their brains shrink. They shrink. We see that on CT scans and on magnetic resonance uh, scanning. Right. They are very impulsive, emotional, and most that's of right. them are These people angry. become hangry. This, that's, that's a term we have, which is made out of two words, angry and hungry. Yeah. They are hangry, these people, because the brain is starving. So these are angry people, critical people, negative people people um they the kind of revolutionaries they tell everybody off everybody's a sinner and they are the good ones everybody's bad because they're eating meat so they're, they're fighting all the time and they become very black and white in their thinking these people the fineries of the mind disappear their intelligence reduces their ability to learn reduces and their ability to analyze Critical thinking disappears in these people. Cells don't realize that they're losing their mental capacity, that their brain yep. disappears. They don't notice that. Other people around them notice it, but of course they're polite. They may not say anything to these people. They may not get into arguments with them, uh, but that's what's happening. On top of that, these people lose sex hormones because the body simply, all sex hormones, in fact, sex hormones are steroid hormones in the body. <clears throat> and all these hormones are made out of molecules of cholesterol. That is the raw material in the body for making adrenal hormones, sex hormones, and other steroid hormones. So they stop producing these hormones because the body simply doesn't have cholesterol. There's no cholesterol in plants. Cholesterol only comes from animal foods. The body produces cholesterol. Human body produces it. But in order to produce it, the body requires building materials to make it from. It requires animal foods. So these people develop a low, very low cholesterol status in their bodies, and the body cannot produce steroid hormones. Many steroid hormones run our immune system, so the, their immune system becomes compromised. They cannot fight any infection. They, they have a low, low immune status, these people. And the menstruation stop, the libido stops, any interest in the opposite sex stops altogether. So long-term vegans don't form happy families and have no children. And uh, this fact was first discovered by uh, medieval monks and nuns, Christian monks and nuns who yeah. lived in monasteries, and they were not allowed to have any contact with the opposite sex because of their religion. So um, they were looking for a way of reducing their sexual energy. It was a problem for them. Yeah. 
And they found that becoming a vegan or becoming a vegetarian does it perfectly. As you stop eating animal foods, menstruation stops, libido stops, there is no interest in the opposite sex, it was perfect for them. So if one of you wants to become a monk or a nun, then perhaps that's good for you. But for those who would like to form a family one day and have children maybe and have husbands and wives one day and fall in love, uh, that's a disaster for those people who would like that. So this is just some information on um, this subject. To get a full story, please read my book. It's, it's really interesting that you say, Dr. Natasha, that uh, the vegan's brain gets smaller and their critical thinking stops because most of them from my entourage started uh, going fully vegan very emotionally after watching a Netflix documentary, which is absurd. It's childish. It's watching a movie and you change all your life. Um, well, what you we said... need to understand that this sort of, uh, there is a very active pro-vegan, pro-vegetarian propaganda going on all over the world now from every government. It's a government-run propaganda. We need to understand who runs the governments in the world. The same corporations, the 1% of humanity that owns everything, every corporation in the world, they're running this propaganda. They put their people into agricultural departments in every government, and then the governments run this propaganda to the population. So why these corporations want everybody vegan and vegetarian? Because I'm an organic farmer. I have an organic farm, so I know I produce my own food. So I know how it works. Yeah. In industrial agriculture, it is very easy for them, easy and profitable to grow plants because they have machinery, they have chemicals, they have seed that has been hybridized, genetically modified, coated in chemicals. Scientists have worked it out perfectly for them. It all works. They produce the yield. Nobody is interested what's inside that yield, how much nutrition there is in that grain or in that oil or whatever else. Nobody's interested that it's full of chemicals and devoid of nutrition, but they get their yield and they get their profit. Animals don't comply with the industrial model. They just refuse to comply. They get sick and they die. Yeah. Because what they've done, they, they want to plow everything. They've taken animals off pasture. They plowed the pasture to grow all the grain and all the plants there. And they locked all the animals and birds in prisons called CAFOs, confined animal factory operation. And they're feeding these animals and birds the grain that they produce on the pastures, on, on the land. Grain is not a good food for chickens, cows, sheep, pigs, or anybody else. It makes them sick. And fat. Exactly. They're supposed to be on pasture. They're supposed to eat grass. Chickens eat a lot of grass and they find their own meat in the, in the pasture because they find worms and grubs and insects and other things. That's their meat. Why do you think the egg yolk is yellow in the eggs? Because of all the grasses that the chickens eat, grasses and herbs. The carotenoids in the grasses turn the yolk yellow. Do you know where the color in the yolks in the supermarket come from? From a yellow dye, a chemical yeah. that is fed to the chickens to make their yolks yellow. Which egg is going to give you good health and which one is going to make you sick? We have to abandon supermarkets altogether because supermarkets are stocked by industrial agriculture. Everything you buy there is manipulated, full of chemicals, is low in nutrition and full of cruelty and grief, basically, you eating. Because food is information. When we eat food, we eat information. Every information has a vibration, a frequency of vibration. Animals on my farm, Animals on other organic farms and chickens who are on pasture, roaming free, uh, under the sunlight, finding their own food. They're happy. They're healthy. They have a, a busy social life. You know, they have a happy life, these animals. The food that they give you is full of those emotions that they experience. That's the information you eat with their food. It's information of love and joy and freedom and good health. The information that you're eating from a supermarket coming from industrial agriculture is abuse, informational abuse, grief, greed, and other such things. How can that food make you healthy? Anybody who wants to become healthy, we have to abandon supermarkets. You either have to start producing your own food, or you have to find farmers who produce proper food, uh, or find people in the villages who still produce proper food, encourage these people. So it takes time nowadays, and it takes effort in our modern, abundant world to actually find real food. We have a, a visibility of this abundance, but in reality, it, 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 isn't, a, a, it isn't food. So coming back to the veganism and vegetarianism, where this whole propaganda comes from. So for industrial agriculture, it is easy to produce plant matter, very yeah. difficult to produce meat, eggs, and milk, because these animals get sick in these cafos, they die from cancer, and you know they, they all have arthritis, they all have allergies, skin problems, they get cancer, and, and uh, so they have to kill them young before they develop cancer. 
these animals, and they have to keep them on antibiotics all the time, steroids and other drugs all the time. Drugs are expensive. So animal husbandry is unprofitable for them, expensive, difficult. They want to get rid of it. And indeed, now what's happening in the world, you probably heard of what's happening in Holland, in Ireland, and in other places. They are trying to exterminate animal husbandry, get yeah. rid of animals all together. On top of that, the same people that own all these corporations have invested billions into new technologies of synthetic meat, synthetic yeah. milk, synthetic eggs. The synthetic meat and synthetic milk are already in the supermarkets. Eggs are coming, synthetic. And real eggs, real meat, real milk are a competition for these things. That is why they want to get rid of them. So they want the whole planet to be vegan. That's where propaganda for veganism comes from, from these people. With their industrial agricultural model, they are destroying the soil. The soil yeah. that covers our planet is the basis of all life on Earth. Yeah. All life begins in the soil and ends in the soil. And all these chemicals that they're pouring on the land and other practices that they use destroy topsoil. We're losing topsoil at an alarming rate. Once we've lost it, that's it. Life on the planet will be exterminated. And uh, by some assessments of some researchers, we've got no more than 50 years left if we continue the way we are continuing. Who creates topsoil on the planet? Who has created it in the first place? Huge herds of bison, cows, sheep, antelope, zebra, wildebeest, deer in the north, and other herbivorous animals. The way they work with the pasture, with the grasslands, their manure, their urine, and the way they eat the grasses and they move on all the time. They have created topsoil on our planet over millions and millions of years. The only way for us to restore the topsoil on the planet and to save our planet is to eat more meat, more milk, more eggs, to stimulate our farmers to have bigger herds of animals. Because every time, if you graze the animals correctly, if you move them all the time, you don't build a fence, lock your cows up and forget about them. That is wrong. You have to move the animals all the time. And that way you create soil. And when you create soil, soil is the biggest reservoir of carbon on our planet and lots of other things too. So when you create soil this way, when you gra graze the animals correctly, you are taking carbon out of the atmosphere and you're locking it up in the soil forever, for hundreds of years. Because soil is humus in the soil, is a carbon polymer. It holds carbon in the soil. The major cause of our carbon in the atmosphere and methane is arable agriculture, growing plants. Number one cause, because they destroy soil, they destroy humus and they release all that carbon out of the soil into the atmosphere. And then they pour nitrogen fertilizers onto that destroyed soil. And majority, more than 70% of these nitrogen fertilizers are immediately released as methane into the atmosphere. So they've made this fairy tale that cows are farting yeah. and burping and causing global warming. Where in reality, they are causing it. It's their nitrogen fertilizers that are causing that global warming. They are released as methane. Cows have nothing to do with it. We need our, our only hope to restore our planet back to health is more cows, more sheep, more pigs, more chickens, more turkeys, grazed correctly to create the soil. The more of these kind of farms we have, the quicker we will restore our planet back to. That is what vegans and vegetarians need to hear. That is the truth. Because they've been given a very um, cleverly crafted propaganda from the 1% of humanity. Convince them to become vegan so they get more profit. They're not think that critically, probably. They can't. Uh, Their brains are not working. Yep. You said, Dr. Natasha, that fasting would be good. But what about people that are underweight or having intestinal and digestive problems. People who are underweight should never fast. Their body is already thin on the ground. They should never fast. They need to follow the GAPS nutritional protocol because the GAPS protocol heals the digestive system. We have, I don't know how many people all over the world who have recovered from Crohn's disease, ulcerative colitis, other inflammatory bowel disorders, some stomach problems, gastritis, hiatus hernia that you've mentioned, any kind of digestive disorder. GAPS diet heals these disorders completely. They disappear these disorders. And whatever else is uh, happening in the body has got its roots in the digestive system. You might have rheumatoid arthritis and you'll say, well, my digestive system is all right. I have no gas, no pain, no constipation, no diarrhea. Despite the fact that you have non none of those symptoms, the roots of your rheumatoid arthritis are in your gut. When you heal your gut with the GAPS diet, rheumatoid arthritis will disappear. Multiple sclerosis will disappear. Asthma, eczema, psoriasis, chronic cystitis, schizophrenia, epilepsy, all of these disorders disappear. 
All diseases begin in the gut, and that's where we have to start. 